Hello everyone, this is Damien. Uh, this is going to be episode number uh, six of Beginner's CPP. Uh, you can just ignore that code that I have in there. That's what we're going to be building. Uh, I am going to roll us back to the code that we had earlier, uh, which is this. And I'm going to get rid of all of our comments here. And we're going to start with this. So, as you recall, we had this, uh, this simple if-else statement where we essentially said, um, if the balance is greater than what we have, we're not going to do it. If the balance is greater than 1,000, we are going to make the user call their bank. And if it's not, we're going to let the withdrawal go through. Now, let's assume that instead of this, call your bank to confirm nonsense that we're doing here. Let's say we want to do something simple. And let's say press 1 to confirm, comma, press 2 to decline this transaction. Um, to withdraw and we'll do uh, the withdraw amount. And since that's actually going off the uh, the screen there, I'm going to break this in the middle and bring that down to its own line. Uh, just so you can do it, so you can see it easier. Normally you won't be see outing, you know, big long strings like this, but this time we are. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called int confirm equals zero. Uh, we will get into the, into how to take in a string and how to check the string to see if it's equal to something else, but you got to walk before you, uh, before you run. So in this case, we're, we're definitely uh, getting there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see in for confirm. So from there, we're going to do if confirm equals one. And we're going to do a C out and say, um, confirmation accepted and let's just basically copy paste the rest from here so we'll grab that do just like that and uh, again let's split this so it'll be on two lines so it's not quite so much um, why is that uh, there we go and then let's do an else statement. And when we put in this else, it's only going to this if statement. So anything that comes right after the closing bracket of an if is always the else. So, or well, in in this case, it's, it's an else. So whenever there's an, I'm sorry, I explained that really poorly. So whenever you have an if statement that closes, an else that comes immediately after it will be uh, pertaining to this if. Meaning if this if is not true, then this happens. Now, if there was another closing bracket here like this, then this else would be going to this else if. So it's very important that we keep our brackets nested nicely. Um, a lot of the time you'll see people do their brackets like this and they'll put them on the next line. I don't like that. I know where my opening bracket is. Um, I know that if I see the word if or if I see the word while or for or something like that, I'm going to be seeing an opening bracket. So I just look down from wherever it is and then I line it up and I rely on context highlighting and my IDE to show me, you know, where it's pertaining to. So in this case, the else means that if confirm is not equal to one, we're going to do C out and we're going to say trans action um, declined by user. And 
And we'll just leave it at that. That's pretty simple. Um, and so if we come up here and we run it, um, we need to do over 1,000, so let's say 1,250. And if I wanted to, oops, I did the, ah, uh, I didn't put in a uh, semicolon here. Of, there we go. So aside from not putting in a uh, thing there, uh, that looks fine. So let's say I want to push one and confirm it. And it comes out and it tells us that we withdrew 1250 and that leaves us with uh, 3750. So there we are. We'll run it one more time to show you the other way. We'll do 1250 and this time it's asking us to input. We're going to say two to decline it and the transaction has been declined by the user. So when we hit two for our confirm variable, it drops us down to this else statement and inside that else is a C out. Now, if we wanted to hit this, we can still do that by entering a smaller amount. So this is only getting, this stuff is only happening. Uh, this second if statement is only happening when we have an amount over a thousand. So if we do uh, 999, we come out, we get that transaction right away. So this is the basis of nested if statements. Um, there's a lot of them that can get really, really, really overdone. And it gets to the point where you're looking and you're like, okay, if this is true, and then you have three or four levels deep. Um, so there is a feature that I want to show you guys real quick in uh, NetBeans. I'm pretty sure it's in Visual Studio too, for those of you who have decided to install that. But um, what you can do is you can highlight all your code by hitting uh, Control A. Uh, that's a feature in Windows. Um, I think it's a bit different in, uh, in Mac. And you can come up to Source and you can do Format. And when you do Format, it kind of compresses all your code for you and uh, makes it a bit more readable. So that's just something that you should always be aware of. Um, and if your you know, brackets are out of line when you do that, it will kind of take care of it for you. Uh, the only kind of gripe I have with it is I like my else ifs on a new line, um, and I like my else's on a new line. And so when I do this, they quote beautify it to have the closing parenthesis and the else and the open parenthesis on the same line. Um, it's a matter of taste and everybody has their own coding style. Uh, some people, again, like to code with their brackets on a whole new line. Um, the Python programming language actually makes that a requirement that you do that. So I, um, I just wanna stress that you know your, your coding style is uniquely your own but make sure it's readable. You know, make sure that your ifs always line up because if you don't, you will find yourself in deep trouble quickly. All right, guys, my name's Damien. This has been episode number six. If you guys have any questions, uh, let me know and I will be more than happy to help you out. See ya.